Again, my name is Paul Wenberg. I'm from uh, Caltech. Um, Matmos uh, is a partnership uh, between Caltech, uh, JPL, and the Canadian Space Agency. And so I'm the, the PI, but uh, Vicki Hipkin is the co-PI, and uh, it comes from the Canadian uh, Space Agency. <clears throat> so uh, just for, you can't read this, but it's in the, the package. It's our uh, fact sheet front page for the, for the uh, experiment. And really, the experiment grew out of a, a Mars Scout uh, proposal in many ways that Mark Allen and I had worked on for a very long time. And uh, to explain a little bit about the mission, so it is a trace gas orbiter. The main focus of the mission is to investigate the trace gas composition of the Martian atmosphere. And the idea really goes back to, to what Gus was mentioning about uh, Viking. Um, the idea from Lovelock and, and many others, right, that we could use chemical information in the atmosphere of planets or other bodies to say something about what might be coming out of the, out of the surface. And that's really the intellectual uh, framework in which this investigation takes place. And for us, uh, as we'll see, there's the, the orbiter. Um, uh, and twice, twice each orbit, first in, shown on the top here in sunset and then in sunrise, the spacecraft will point the instruments uh, that are looking at the sun. There's uh, both MAPMOS and an ESA, uh, the Belgian instrument um, uh, NOMAD. So they'll be pointed at the sun. And in our case, we'll be taking spectra of the sun as the uh, tangent height changes by approximately three kilometers. So what we get then is a transmission limb spectrum of the, of the Martian atmosphere. And I'll talk a little bit about how that will work. The, the science, uh, key science objectives of MATMOS, which really are mostly the same as the, as the mission as a whole, are to search uh, for atmospheric chemical tracers of interesting things coming out of the surface that might tell us something about the geological context or possibly the biological context. Um, we're interested then in quantifying sources and sinks of trace gases, and these include things such as methane and other hydrocarbons. Uh, we want to quantify the exchange of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and using their isotopologs, for example, to understand better the coupling between the surface and the atmosphere more generally. And, and then uh, somewhat in uh, collaboration with, with MAVEN, uh, MAVEN is the uh, mission that will be trying to understand escape from the top down. And uh, MATMOS uh, can help that by looking from the bottom up, essentially looking at how volatiles uh, make their way up into the upper atmosphere, um, which will pro provide an important context for that, for that uh, data set, the MAVEN data set. So this is uh, what MATMOS uh, data will look like. So what's shown here is just a few sample uh, in, uh, spectra that we obtain. The important point is that this is, we, we take data throughout the entire mid-infrared from about uh, two and a half to 12 microns. Uh, but we do that at extremely high spectral resolution. So all this apparent noise here in the transmission spectrum are the absorptions due to the, to the gases that are uh, present in our simulation. The broad context here where you see the, the limb transmission going down is due to the, to the dust. So there's a, a, a lower dust case up here and a, and a higher dust case here. And you can see that, you know, if you look at, say, at nine, nine kilometers, the blue, you have a, an optical depth of something like about 20% of your light is making it through the, uh, through the limb. But by the time we get down to these uh, high uh, dust, in the higher dust cases, we're only uh, gathering a small window around 10 microns. So we're going to use this, uh, this, these data to then analyze them on the ground to look at the vertical distribution of all the trace gases. So just to show that this is not really magic, this has been done before. It's been done uh, from the space shuttle uh, by the Atmos uh, experiment. And it's been done um, in orbit about Earth today. So the Canadian Space Agency, in a collaboration with NASA for the launch vehicle, uh, launched a, an instrument called ACE-FTS into orbit about Earth. It's been operating for nearly a decade now. And it's really the, the hardware um, uh, model for, for MATMOS. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of the same technology that's used on that current operating uh, spacecraft. And this just shows a very small part of the spectrum of the limb transmission of the Earth's atmosphere. These are actual data taken um, at 50 kilometers altitude in the Earth's stratosphere. So the, the tangent pressure altitude, this is about one millibar, equivalent to uh, just, say, the tropopause at, at, at Mars. And what's shown here is it's just a half a wave number. So that's out of uh, the 3,000 or 4,000 wave numbers of, of spectrum that we're going to get. 
Um, showing the trace gas absorption in the stratosphere. So these little bot, bots here are the data themselves, and then the, the little lines here are the fits to those. And you can see the, the absorption due to a very minor trace gas here, CH3D. It's a methane with one deuterium on it. You can see the absorption due to ozone and, and methane. It's that quality and, and kind of data that we're going to be using at Mars to, to identify the trace gases. So it's remarkably uh, sensitive, this technique. We get detection limits in the parts per trillion range for numerous of these trace gases. And that is essential then to try to, to look for what there are any, any small residual sources that might be coming from geology or biology. We're also able to do a really good job on the isotopic fractionation within those gases because, as I showed earlier, the, the absorption due to CH3D is different than that from methane. Um, this is a one, uh, one season of data. So because you're in, uh, in doing occultation, where you get your data is completely defined by the mission itself, by what is the, the, uh, the orbit. And so at the, at the proposed inclination of the, of the TGO spacecraft, this would be what you'd get between L sub S0 and L sub S90. And you can see you get pretty nice uh, global coverage, but it is sparse uh, because that's just where the, the occultations occur. We also have a, vil uh, a visible imager. Um, one of the uh, novel aspects of this mission is that unlike, say, ACEFTS or ATMOS, uh, MATMOS has no active, um, active control on the input of the sun into the instrument. That's all to be performed by the avionics system of the, um, of the, uh, of the orbiter. So we absolutely require that, that the, the operations and, the, and the, the spacecraft operate perfect, well, not perfectly, but very well in order to, to follow the sun as it rises and sets through the atmosphere. And so to verify that that's happening, we do have a visible imager that allows us to image the sun on the limb along with the field of view of, the, of, of our instrument itself so that we can uh, assure that the, the spacecraft is doing its job. Um, so briefly in operations then, we have a, uh, so we're getting these uh, two sets of, of of interferograms. This is a Michelson interferometer um, uh, on sunrise and sunset. This is a huge amount of data that could, you can never bring back to Earth. So that's the second aspect of this mission that's different from ACE. We actually have to do a significant amount of, of data processing on orbit at about Mars in order to, uh, to live within our data allocation. And to, we're, again, the sparseness of the data in this case help us because we take uh, a, a burst of data here and a burst of data here, and in between we can process all the data and pipe it over to the, to the spacecraft for, for uh, transmission. And this is my last slide, just showing the sort of a cartoon of the instrument. It sits on the, on the TGO uh, um, solar deck, as it's called. Uh, the, the interferometer core is uh, provided to MAPMOS uh, through the Canadian Space Agency. Um, and is a, an essential copy of several interferometers that they are operating uh, in Earth today. Um, the telescope optics are quite simple, and they also come from, from the Canadian Space Agency. JPL is doing all of the, all of the packaging and uh, the, the, the computer for doing the data processing and so forth, and as well as the, what we call the aft optics and detector system and radiometer. So that's essentially what, uh, what MATMOS is and what uh, we hope to accomplish.